Dello Heavy Duty Engine Oils. Proven engine protection at prices you can rely on, giving you even more reasons to choose Dello. Today we're here to talk about the humble skid steer. We're here to talk about Caterpillar's new 285 XE skid, and here to help us with information on that product is Trevor. Well, Trevor, thank you so much for taking time to be on the dirt today. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having us on. This is a it's an exciting time, and, and really appreciate the the chance to talk with you. Yeah, absolutely. It is is it. It is an exciting time. We're getting into these bigger and bigger skid steers, and, and I'm eager to hear about some of the, the new stuff that's coming. So that being said, will you give us kind of an overview of the 285XE and what it's bringing to the table? Sure. So 285XE, this is a size class of machine that we've not had before. So this is an all new platform for CAT. So this machine, it's a big, strong machine. On the XE, you can get up to 134 horsepower. Wow. To be able to run, you know, hungry attachments, right? Things like mulchers and coal planers, whatever it may be. But that's just one aspect of it. So you get a lot of horsepower, you get a lot of hydraulic power, a lot of flow, a lot of pressure to be able to run those attachments. But also we have things like 146 inches of B-pin lift height. Wow. Really strong lift and tilt forces. So we've increased the, the breakout forces in those machines. And we've also increased just overall capability, our stability of the machine. And then, of course, all of the other neat things also inside the cab, you know, changing to that new next gen cab and making that common among all the next gen machines. So the difference with an undercarriage. Also, we made some changes and, and moved away from the torsion bar suspension that we've traditionally had in that 299. And in the 275 and the 285, we now have an equalizer bar type of undercarriage that we can talk about here coming up. But this thing is a clean sheet of paper design. Yeah, all of the DNA that we have had and learned about in the last 25 years of making um, skid steer loaders and track machines, it goes in there. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is. It's it's so interesting to see how these machines have evolved. You know, it back in the day, it was... It was exciting to have this little machine that was just really versatile and it could do 360 spins and and you know it was nice and now we've moved into this space where 130 horsepower out of one of these little units i mean they've gone from being a handy little tool to these are powerhouses on the job and you're able to move unbelievable amounts of material and we've used them in such a variety of applications and now all of a sudden, they're not just productive in moving dirt. These are becoming a main tool in land clearing operations where that used to be reserved for dozers and excavators. Right. And now these skid steers are really coming in and making an impact. So it's awesome to see what the industry's done with these machines. Yeah, it, it, you know, asset utilization comes in a lot now with these machines because of their capabilities. In all fairness, they're able to replace other machines. Now, they may not, you know, the 285, we don't put it out there as this is a replacement for a dozer, right? Like this isn't replacing a D1 or a D2 or D3 dozer. But can sure. it go out there with a, with a smart dozer blade and do some work? Absolutely, right? So asset utilization with these machines man, it's, it's really changed the game. Like, like you said, I mean, they are, they are becoming prevalent on, on these job sites where it used to take a whole handful of machines. Now that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it is, like I said, it's just fascinating to see the evolution of these machines. So that being said, let's talk about more the equalizer bar and how that's different from the old style torsion bar. What does that do for us? What are the advantages? So the E-Bar undercarriage that stands for Equalizer Bar, that is a design that we've borrowed from our small track type tractor group. It's been in dozers for the longest time. And what you have is you have an E-Bar in the front of the machine and it allows the machine or the, the undercarriage itself, right, to go over uneven ground and still get that movement. Torsion bar before used to be four independent torsion axles, two up front, two in the rear. And it would allow the machine to be able to go over uneven ground and the undercarriage would, would move accordingly. When you get to those bigger machines that we're talking about now, the, the 275 and the 285, we heard a lot from voice of customer out there and operator that stability was more important in these bigger machines. And they wanted to feel more stable because they want to lift heavy loads and lift them high. So this E-bar 
allows a whole lot more stability, but yet still giving you some of that flex and some of that ability to have better ride comfort, better material retention, better track life compared to as if it were just a, a fixed or welded solid undercarriage on there. So front, front equalizer bar allows the tracks to, to move like this. There's a pivot shaft in the rear that allows them to move so that it, it, it does that and really gives you, like I said, that, uh, that ability to, to have a, a little bit more comfort and a lot more stability, um, especially with the, the fact that these things can lift so much weight and lift them so high now. Yeah. And, and that has always been a concern, I think, as an operator is when you really start getting into those heavy loads on uneven ground, especially with a track machine, you know, we're re really the majority of the industry at this point, I think we can all openly discuss when we say skid steer, we really mean a CTL. That's, that's what the majority of the industry is using. Absolutely. And when you get on that uneven ground, not having those tracks firmly planted, having that kind of teeter totter, the, the rocking effect going on, you know, that's a little unnerving when you get into those heavy loads. So I can see where that sort of stability would be a massive improvement. So let's kind of dive into now the difference between static stability versus dynamic stability and how that relates to rated operating capacity. And just for the audience's sake, rated operating capacity when you're just at any dealership is just this number. And it's this number that we all think we can take every machine and we can level it down to this and that's going to put them all on an even playing field. But you're saying that's not necessarily the case. Can you explain the difference between the two and why ROC can change as a result? But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. These cranes work around the clock for months at a time. If one of these engines ever goes down, it costs more than our reputation. Switching to Dello 600 ADF, it's been a game changer. We've had no issues with clogged DPFs. I mean, no regen lights, no cleaning, no replacements, nothing. This oil goes beyond anything we've ever used. I choose proven protection that keeps our cranes on the job. I choose Dello 600 ADF. Can you explain the difference between the two and why ROC can change as a result. Absolutely, love to. Um, so you're absolutely right. Uh, ROC is this number that the industry uses in order to just kind of classify machine sizes. And that rated operated capacity is a percentage of the tipping load. Tipping load is the amount of weight it takes when you pull down on a bucket at its furthest point out to get the either the rear tire or the rear idler to come off the ground. But that's on a flat piece of concrete, right? It's done in a, it, you know, machines are not running. They're sitting there static. They're not moving. They're not actually doing any work. So we all use that same test. And so therefore we compare that. But at the end of the day, when it means getting out there and doing the actual work, the ROC kind of, I mean, gets you in the neighborhood of understanding where, you know, what machines can do, but it absolutely does not act, uh, you know say for sure that this is what this machine can pick up or this is what you can go and do with the machine and we found that a lot with our testing with our next gen machines because we went in wanting greater stability especially because we're putting on bigger lift cylinders bigger tilt cylinders wanting to lift more weight we're like you know what we've got to make the machine more stable and so by doing these stability changes, this dynamic stability, which means what happens when you're running the machine and you've got, you know, 5,000 pound pallet or, uh, you know, a blasting mat, whatever it may be. And, and at whatever load center that may be. And as that changes, that actually changes how much a machine can actually lift and whether it's going to nose over you know, when you start to go over uneven ground. And so we really focused on making sure, okay, yeah, let's have this good rating for a spec, but let's make sure that when people are actually running the machines, that they're like, wow, I thought for sure that I was going to go forward or the machine couldn't handle that weight. That's where that static stability versus dynamic stability comes in. Dynamic stability is where it's at. And we always discuss this with our dealers when they come in for training. There's nothing out there. There's no industry measurement for dynamic stability, right? It's just not. It's one of those things of it. It's a seat of the pants feeling. And that's, hey, that I totally understand it. But that's why we're, you know, we tell people you got to try these machines. You got to sit in them, you got to run it, and you got to feel the difference. Yeah, absolutely. 
So my final question for you is, any other performance improvements or features available on the new machines versus the predecessors? Yeah, so <laughs> other than me taking the, the easy way out to say everything, there's some really <laughs> exciting things in it. The cab itself, it's a much bigger cab uh, than we've ever had before. We've made a lot of improvements. We have heated and ventilated seats. We've changed where all of the buttons are for any type of operator adjustment. You can get an optional eight inch touchscreen monitor with the advanced joysticks. You don't have to take your hands off the joysticks ever to do anything in the monitor or anything with your work tools. It's all right there. We've also done some really cool things with the new 275 and 285 and offered rear auxiliary hydraulics. You can put things like a winch or a scarifier, stabilizers and whatever might come down the road, things that you may want on the rear of the machine on its own dedicated circuit. So it's not been tapped into the front auxiliary hydraulics. It would have its own dedicated circuit. And we're going to offer those attachments factory from Caterpillar. So they're designed and built for it. So just so many things. When you, when you talk about the performance itself, the power with the new CAT engine being that 3.6 turbo after cooled engine and getting that mass amount of horsepower and torque out of it. Back in the engine bay, where we've simplified serviceability even more. You get in the back of that machine and you can feel like you can crawl in it. Yet at the same point, still have a machine where you have fantastic visibility when you're in the operator seat. So a lot of really cool things in there. Again, keep saying, just like when it comes to the stability aspect, people need to get in these things. Because it's been 11 or 12 years since we've had a new series machine, what you may have seen with Caterpillar before or known previously, it's different. It, there's so many really great, uh, great changes to these machines that you got to get in it, sit in it and try it. Yeah, it is interesting. I, just all of the aspects you're you're talking about, the the comfort of the cab. I mean, you know, there's so many people in the industry that just get so caught up on, well, every year these kids years get more and more expensive. But the machines they're referencing back to are, are the machine that they had in 1985 that was a bare bones machine with, you know, 40 horsepower and it barely did what it needed to do. And and now we're, you know, as you're describing this, it occurs to me, it's almost like you've you've combined a almost luxury vehicle, not quite, with a jet fighter. And in the sense of you talking about being able to go into your screen and do a lot of things without even taking your hands off the controls, it just occurred to me the modern day operator is getting closer and closer to a fighter pilot in the standpoint of on the fly, we're able to go in and change settings and be more efficient without having to remove our hands off of the controls. And that means that we can go into these machines and move more dirt more efficiently while still being comfortable over the duration of a very long day. And it's just, it's so fascinating how far these machines have come. And you're hundred percent right. And funny story, as we were developing um, this machine, I, I called our joysticks at the time, the F-35 joysticks, because it was exactly that type of feel that you were talking about where you're like, man, I feel like I'm a fighter pilot in this thing, right? Like I've got, yeah. it, it is so crazy to be sitting in the seat and have complete control right here in my hands. That's exactly why we've done that. You know, we want to be more productive. And, and when it comes to skid steers, I mean, Productivity has never, you know, it's almost been a naughty word for so long when it comes to skid steers because, hey, nobody judges productivity with skid steers. Yeah, no one really judges it too hard, but you know it. You know when you're being more productive or less productive, right? And so it matters. And it mattered for us to make sure that people who were getting out of other machines and into these machines or whether this was their only machine were as productive as they could be because, yeah, machines are expensive. It doesn't matter what you get. Yeah, some are more expensive than others, but they're expensive. And that was, we also had some sensitivity to that, Brian, as we developed these machines, because we do offer all these things. I'm, I'm here talking about how great, you know, the fighter pilot joysticks are with the advanced monitor and things of that nature. And people would be like, oh, that's cat, you know, too expensive. I don't, I don't need that. Well, hey, we've got other configurations where you don't have to have all of that technology sure. um, if you don't want it, right? We can, you can still have all that same power that that machine has and your dealer can, can get it to where you don't have to have, you don't want ventilated seat. You don't have to have ventilated seat. You want the standard monitor that's still a really nice monitor, but you don't want the eight inch touchscreen. We can configure it that way for you too, right? And we can configure it with fully functional joysticks 
but not those advanced joysticks. You know, there's a whole bunch of ways to say, hey, we can give you all the benefits that a cat machine can give you. And you don't have to go and have the highest configuration. If you want it, that's great. If that's not for you, we've got other levels of configurations to fit all budgets and all styles of work. Absolutely. Well, Trevor, thank you so much for all of the information and the skids to your nerd out. I appreciate it. No, my, my pleasure. Love talking to you. It's, it's been a great, great time. Well, thank you again for Trevor and Caterpillar coming on the show to talk about the new 285 XE. As you can see, the humble skid steer is not so humble anymore, and it's bringing a lot of power to the table. So as always, I hope this information helps you in your business. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Dirt.